Hey guys, it's Colton here, and uh, in this episode of Spiritual Essence, I am going to help you deal with a haunted or possessed object in your possession that may be causing you problems and how to deal with it properly. And um, there are three steps, three, that I recommend. The first one actually, it has a whole bunch of different examples. There's a multitude of things you can do to prevent this from happening. So number one, try to immediately cleanse anything that is brought into your home by a friend or family member, a coworker, what have you, uh, something from a garage sale, thrift stores, any object that has been used or owned by a person, no matter who it is. Objects pick up on a lot of energy. They pick up on our positive energy. They pick up on our negative energy. And they soak it up like a sponge. Um, no matter what mood we're in, no matter what we're doing, objects are constantly absorbing energy. And they are doing it whenever we're around them. All these objects. This sheet. This pillow. Um, this camera. It is all absorbing energy right now. We may not know it. We may not feel it. But it's happening. And say we're in a bad mood. And we're angry, or someone is that way a lot of the time when they're around an object. It's going to soak up all that negative energy until it becomes something awful. Um, the negative energy can ball up on it until it actually has a mind of its own. Or it can become a negative energy magnet and attract something like an evil uh, human spirit or demonic entity. So you're going to want to cleanse this to make sure before and putting it in your household. And there's a multitude of ways. So number one is um, bless sage or incense. And you can easily bless or charge, like I say, sage or incense or an herb that you burn yourself. I don't have an herb right now, but let's just say that this cardboard piece is um, sage. Let's just, for the sake of argument, hold in your hands, close your eyes, and imagine in your mind the energy of your body coming down your arms and filling this piece of cardboard. And it also helps to say a little prayer over it like, I hereby fill this piece of cardboard with positive energy and may it cleanse whatever it touches and repel all negative energy. I hereby bless it now. Thank you. And I, you will be able to feel the vibration. So if this were sage, you would feel the exact same thing. So all you'd have to do is burn it and the energy would come up with the smoke. And even when the smoke disappears with the sage or incense, the energy will stick to whatever the smoke touches because energy is not that easy to dissipate as smoke is. So it doesn't hurt to um, just cleanse the object by immersing it in the smoke and that is a good way of cleansing the object. Another way is um, just holding a uh, a prayer vigil over the object itself. So basically just putting your hands on the object and saying a prayer to cleanse it. Similar to what we did with the piece of cardboard, you know, put your hands over it, close your eyes and just say a prayer over it. I hereby bless and cleanse this here cardboard of negative energy. I remove any negative energy or energies that it has taken up over its past and I fill it with new and bright, loving, healing energy. Um, Reiki Energetic Cleanse, which is, uh, for those of you who aren't Reiki masters, but I'm studying, you take an object, 
you use the energy in your uh, body. And uh, if you guys haven't uh, seen that video or if you're new to my channel, um, in some of the earlier videos, I teach you how to feel and move energy. That's kind of a way of doing it. So you hold the object in your hand and you visualize the energy coming out of your hand and you make sure that you are aware of your emotions and you just feel the energy that comes off it and I can actually feel an incredible amount of it, it feels dense actually there's a dense layer of energy even how far my hand is away from this I can feel it, it it's powerful it is so basically you're gonna wanna wave your hands over it and imagine any negative energy just coming off it and basically scraping it away and having it dissipate when it hits the ground and basically cleansing it with your energy. Imagine a sponge in your hand that's like soapy and just cleansing this here piece of cardboard and filling it with new, brand new fresh energy. That's a way of using Reiki energetic cleanse. So even if you don't understand what Reiki is, that is a simpler way of putting how it's done. Um, another way is by um, using moon water. Moon water is pure water. It can also be rain water, snow water, or um, distilled or filtered water. It's placed in a clear container, clear bottle, what have you, and placed uh, in the moonlight overnight. Make sure that you take the water in before the sun hits it because then it won't be moon water anymore. It'll be sun water and that will just compromise everything that you wanted to do. So just place it in the moonlight for a couple of hours and then take it inside and the moon will charge it with the lunar energy and it will give you a nice positive energetic flow and just pour it over the object. Now if it's something that you can't exactly place a whole lot of water over, put it in a spray bottle and just have it mist over it. Um, here, Another ingredient that I constantly mention on my channel is a mixture of distilled water, lemon juice, and sea salt. And mixing that all together along with placing it in the moon or blessing it yourself will create a nice charge of positive energy and just placing it over the object and wiping it down. Another way is envisioning a white pure light coming over the object and piercing right through it, destroying and dispersing all shadowy, dark, negative energy that may be onto it and just filling it with positive pure powerful light energy and that is a, another form of Reiki energetic cleanse that you can do just close your eyes and envision the white light just coming over it and it immerses all shadow in its white powerful light and just destroys all darkness those are many different ways you can cleanse an object yourself. Rule number two. If you're one of those people who's always on the go, very busy, doesn't really have time for much, there is a way that you can temporarily, I might add, place the object until you can cleanse it. And it's called a shadow box. A shadow box preferably is a wooden box, um, a lock box, something that has a lock on it. And what you do is you use any of the cleansing methods that I have just taught you and you use it on this lock box. And that way it has a powerful energetic strength to it. And it's a place to put the um, possessed or haunted object until you are available to cleanse it. Now what's wrong with just placing it in a regular lockbox? Well, the thing is, spirits can leave the object that they are possessing for moments in time and still cause trouble for you and your household. So by doing this, by energetically strengthening the lockbox that you put it in, 
this will prevent the spirit or entity from being able to leave the object and causing trouble until you are available to cleanse it. Now, a word of caution. If you are going to use the shadow box method, number one, make sure it has a lock and it's a strong box. It's not a cardboard box. It's a wooden or maybe a metal lock box. Maybe some place where you would store money, things like that. Maybe a safe, things like that. And number two, if you're gonna use the method, do not place it in there for a long period of time. Just because you place it in there doesn't mean you're out of the danger yet. So if you have to like just wait a couple of days, maybe till the weekend because your work week is hectic, I understand. Just make sure you get to it as soon as possible. You're going to want to cleanse it as soon as possible because the longer a spirit sticks to a person or a thing, the more the spiritual binding becomes and it basically starts to stick to the person or thing like glue and the longer it's with you the harder it's going to be to get off all right number three if you find that any or all of the cleansing did not work on this object and the only reason I can think of why this wouldn't work is because it's a stronger demonic entity, a very, very negative energy. And that is when you're going to have to get more professional help. Maybe someone who's more experienced in demonology. There are demonologists who are trained to handle things like this. Um, you can try consulting a church if you are if you belong to one. Some are actually willing to help you even if you're not associated with them. The the right ones will be able to help you. Um, but if for whatever reason that the cleansing does not work, and you just want to get rid of it, do not get rid of it immediately. Place it in an area, maybe outside the home, uh, maybe somewhere in the, uh, maybe a backyard, or maybe place it somewhere out of the household. Now, this is not going to stop the haunting, but it will temporarily allow you to come up with a plan. Now, what I suggest to all people when they deal with something like this is to perform a binding. Now, here is how a binding would uh, go down. So it helps to place the um, possessed object in a circle of salt. Sea salt, it wouldn't even hurt to bless the salt just for a little added extra protection. And, um, having blessed candles around it or uh and sage also so basically you're going to want to have all these you know cautions you know evaluated and make sure that you have all the protection you need in place but make sure that this uh the spirit and the object to that is holding the spirit is sealed within this protection barrier it cannot harm you. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your hands and you are going to imagine or envision. A lot of people have trouble with the imagine because they say it's not real. But envision the energy flowing out of your heart chakra, down your arms, feel it, and imagine that the energy is expanding outward like a, a force field or a wall of energy. Now you are going to extend out your hands towards the object that you are wanting to bind. And you are going to envision the energy surrounding the object and you are going to want to kind of um, I want to say just make your hands a little tighter 
you know, and as you're doing this, envision the energy getting more dense and surrounding the object. And you are going to want to say a um, particular spell or word of power of your making, maybe a prayer. Like, um, for example, I bind the spirit into this object and prevent it from doing harm against myself and others. And say that like three times. And as you're doing this, envision the energy sphere, like becoming a sphere around this here object and slowly make it more dense. And as you're doing this, just in just envision it and say it many times until you see in your mind's eye that the um, energy is just surrounding the borders of the object and is super dense and the spirit cannot escape. It may seem like a lot, but if you guys want to learn energy, that is a perfect exercise. You can practice on a non-haunted object. Uh, it's always good to get practice in, like I said. Um, just uh, keep in mind. Uh, just be safe. If it seems like it's not working, you might want to call professionals on this. Sometimes it helps just to get rid of the object, but in that's only in rare cases. Especially when it comes to a demonic entity. Do not, I repeat... Do not, at first thought, burn the object, destroy the object, or give the object away to someone else. You do not want to burden someone else with this. Um, breaking or burning the object will sometimes disturb the energy of the spirit within, and it could retaliate and make the haunting worse. And it could even get violent especially when it comes to a demonic entity. That's why they say never burn a Ouija board, never break a Ouija board once it's been used, because you have already established a connection into the spirit world, and by severing that, it disturbs the energy, and it actually causes the spirits to feel a type of pain. So that makes them angry and want to retaliate against you. So, these are ways to... Deal with a haunted or possessed object. Just know that you are not alone in this, and um, there's always help somewhere. You do not have to deal with this. You do not have to just live with this. There's always help. If you guys are suffering from a situation where you have a cursed object in your home or a haunted object, and what I have um, taught you guys is not working contact me and we can work on another viable solution. I am always here to help you guys. Just know I will not judge you. I am here to help you guys, not judge you. And I'm here to help you on your spiritual journey and this will help you guys. Um, that being said, those are my three um, precautions to take when dealing with a haunted or possessed object. Um... All right, guys, that's that's it for me. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button so that you don't miss any of my new videos. And share this, guys, with as many people as you feel uh, the knowledge pertains to or want to learn. All right, guys, bye-bye now.